so then the point load data uh, after after generating that ortho rectified images after generating that uh, you know the dsm so what what does it mean the dsm dm so as i said that the point load data uh, will uh, uh, give that each points will give that you know xyz informations right so i i just want to see the real world the surface models uh, what i can do there are some options in the softwares like i just want to create the surface model so how that surface model will create it will take the elevation the nearest elevations values or nearest xyz values it will be triangular to each other so because i have i have that you know 1 billion points of or billions of points or millions of points so i can easily triangulate that uh, surface and then i can easily visualize so you can see you can see it is looks very very smooth surfaces when i zoom in so you can see that each and every triangles you can see that so the left images the dsm uh, dsm overlay with the other red images the right side dsm or dm or dtm with the contours so accuracy uh, and applications the next uh, slides i'm going to the cover so as i said that like accuracy is a very very important because uh, the people are going to use uh, for like uh, the natural calamities uh, application uh, for like uh, you know the flood analysis for urban planning forestry mapping so for that accuracy how it is important so typically uh, type uh, like we can get the absolute uh, vertical accuracy of plus or minus uh, 10 meters uh, and uh, horizontal accuracy of uh, 0.5 meters so this is this accuracy also it depends it depends on that uh, you know uh, how how many satellites are available and uh, what are the uh, base uh, values we have used and uh, it it depends it depends on the site conditions right and after uh, after uh, after uh, done with the data acquisition part it will come to that you know that uh, back end process for the data processing they they are also might be using lot of you know uh, gnss software for correct for rectifying the issues and uh, dgps uh, software and they will use for uh, you know the data post processes after like a microstation terra solid product so after after uh, after the pre, pre uh, the data acquisition for the data processing part ultimately uh, the lidar technologies will give the accuracy of like a plus or minus 10 cent 10 meter and plus or minus of the 5.05 uh, meters so this this uh, in the light uh, airborne lidar survey so when we are going to that uh, using that uh, drone technologies we can achieve the accuracy of mm the same kind of things for the mobile lidar survey and terrestrial lidar survey so that's what the people are preferring to go with that you know this lidar technologies especially for the you know epc industries like a uh transmission line projects railway projects or uh, ro roads projects so now i i hope you you might understand like uh, why the people are going with that you know the light technologies instead of the photogrammetry and the remote sensing technologies so as i said that uh, what are the applications applications are going to be uh, what are the applications going to be there by using the light technologies the first one is the flood risk mapping and corridor mapping road and rail and utility mapping like a power line pipeline in the forestry urban wetland mapping coastal zone mapping so based based on that application so let's say i'm just i just want to go for the flood risk mapping so what what kind of uh, technologies i need to use it means what kind of types of survey i have to use obviously i will prefer that you know airborne lidar survey because i just want to cover the more area for that i just want to go with that airborne lidar survey only or else if the areas are very small then i can prefer to go for the drone lidar survey because the flood risk uh, flood risk analysis i need very precise and very highly accurate data so this is based on that applications uh, the users can take up a call and they can use choose the types of survey and they can uh, go for and they can uh, you know choose the sensors as, as well so uh, as i said that like there are two two different uh, uh, parts are will be involved in this uh, technologies one is the data acquisition part and second one is the data processing so for the data processing what are the softwares the people are using so the majorly uh, the people are using that bentley microstation and terra solid products so this is the backbone software so for the you know uh, for airborne lidar data processing or mobile lidar data processing or for point cloud uh, uh point cloud uh, classification or 3d vector mapping extractions the people used to prefer this software so this is like as i said that terra solid it is a product there are so many uh, modules uh, sub modules are available in the terra solid it's like a 16 17 sub modules are there so majorly the people are using the terra scan terra model terra match and terra photos so what is that what what are these uh, modules though terra scan is mainly using for the viewing that point cloud data 
right there are so many tools are there for, uh, i have i have shown you that you know the uh, the two three slides before i want to see that uh, data in uh, by intensity mode by elevation mode or by color mode so there are some uh, tools are available in the terascan we can visualize the data so terascan is only useful for the you know visualizing the point cloud data so terra model for editing the point cloud data as i said that uh, the point cloud data uh, it is having the only one, one class like a default classes i want to classify in different classes let's say i want to classify the data into like a, uh, to segregate in the vegetation uh, like a low vegetation high vegetation medium vegetation and then settlements like a buildings and power lines and roads so for that uh, we can use the terra model uh, modules uh, for editing the point cloud data and then terra, terra match so terra match is mainly use, useful for the you know data calibration so when when we are flying that you know aircraft or drones there will be some mismatch of the between the two flights so i just wants to make the two flights in the same level for that uh, the terra match modules is using so this is a very critical and uh, critical task uh, in the airborne lidar and uh, drone lidar uh, technologies uh, the person should have very highly skilled to do this uh, process means the data calibration process and the same thing like for the terra photo for aerial triangulation process so when when uh, the aircraft it is covering the uh, means it is capturing the aerial images it gives some you know it gives some uh, precise uh, let's say like a uh, uh, 50 cm 1 meter difference deviations that images so how to correct it how to correct that images and how to get the very precise uh, information with the ground truth so for that uh, there is a modules called terra photo so we can do that camera calibration and we can do that ortho rectified images and we, we we can easily generate the ortho ortho rectified images from the terra photo modules so once once you are uh, going for the training the further training about this uh, uh, about this like like lidar technologies so you can go for the each and every tool separately and you can see that like uh, how it is that tools are working uh, how the systems are how the softwares are working in the back end so you can understand very easily as i said that the type of work uh, what we can do uh, by using the uh, airborne lidar survey or mobile lidar survey drone uh, with the lidar survey so first one thing is the like a flight line calibration and bore side calibration and terra match right so you can you can see that uh, what is the what are the uh, types of survey they have used they used for airborne lidar and uh, airborne and mobile lidar so these two uh, these two surveys are very similar uh, as i said before uh, like the data capturing method and data processing method but the way we are looking the data it is totally different and then we can do the data classification uh, airborne mobile data tls and drone data and aerial triangulations for airborne we can uh, airborne data survey data we can do that so medium format of the camera so they will already predefined the camera uh, settings uh, in that uh, like a terra photo modules we can choose any one of the camera which we have used for the you know uh, data acquisition time and then we can easily generate the dem and dsm products what is mean the dem and dsm what is the difference between even these two dem is like a digital elevation models which will you give the only the ground information dsm we, it will give you that all the informations which is included in that like the trees settlements uh, power lines all the management features will be included so that that is called uh, dsm so for what are the inputs we are required means what are the inputs we will uh, we will uh, get it from the airborne data survey or from the lidar technology first we will get that uh, raw laser uh, data right which is in the format of las ba and fpa format and then flight line path as i said that trajectory it is very very important without trajectories we cannot do any further process so trajectory is very very important because in the trajectory that time stamp will be will be stored so how it is combined it means how it is how it is like you know synchronizing uh, the raw laser data and the trajectory the mediator is the time stamp if you lost your time stamps in the laser uh, means in the lidar data you cannot use the lidar data if you lost any like a time stamp value in the trajectory so you cannot use the further uh, any process like a data calibration data classification and generate the outputs so uh, if you want to improve that if you want to improve our data accuracy obviously ground control points is required and if you want to justify our data accuracy for that also we need uh, the ground control points uh, let's say uh, we can say we can tell to that uh, you know the client or to the customers i have achieved the accuracy of like a 10 cm or 0.1 meter, uh, 0.1 meter in the xy and the jet is that like uh, 15 cm or 0.15 meter 
they will ask you like, like how you justify how how you how you can say that like that time we can use our the control points on the base station points then we can you know overlay these points and we can tell them like this is the accuracy which we have achieved so when then we can ask them if you have any reference points you just provide us then we can show you that and then project boundary so project boundary it's like uh, as i said that like if you are going for tens per kilometer hundreds per kilometer thousands per kilometer it will uh, give you the some you know the boundary uh, line the area boundary line that it might having in the gjn format pwg format dx format or shape file format whatever so we can easily interpret this file formats into that any one like if i have received that uh, the input file in the dwg format i can easily convert it to the shape file rpg by using the micro session by using the global mapper or whatever it is and then we can we will prepare the tile index why why this tile index is required so let's say i have the 1000 square kilometer data if i open the 1000 square kilometer data at a time is it possible the data size will be in the db right so for that in a single files i am i just want to create in the multiple files which is uh, which is compatible with the software or with our systems let's say i am having 1000 square kilometer i am going to create 0.5 square kilometer grid uh, for the tile and that 0.5 square kilometer or 1 square kilometer the data i can easily open uh, open the data in the software where the software can give me means the software will support us and our system also will support us so there won't be any hang there won't be any crash will happen so all the projections information will be you know stored in that uh, project boundary files and the trajectory files and then the tile index like uh, which we are going to create the small tiles uh, file that in all that all the file uh, the project inform projection sensor informations will be uh, will be stored so uh, i just wants to tell you one you know important points like if you if you don't know that you know the projection informations you can easily usually open that you know uh, the dgn or shape file into that google earth and you can come to know that like what is the projections that people have used so this is kind of like a tips and tricks like a, how to how to identify the data and uh, if there is any issues to identify the information the particular data so you can easily uh, come to know that and for the inputs for uh, you know point cloud data classification so what are the files we required as I, as you have seen that like a for lesser point cloud data and then project boundary and the tile files and then projections information and the specification document uh, which we have uh, you know get it from the clients or customers based on that that we will go for the classification so the point class uh, definitions file uh, in the pdc format uh, this might be optional or we require this pdc files the where we can create this pdc files and prj files in the uh, terra scan or terra model so we can use and we can create that pdc so what what will we carry that pdc files like a pdc uh, which is having the different classes like uh, point number 1 it is having the building class point number 2 it is having that vegetation point number 3 it is having the power line so all the information will be stored in that point class uh, uh, file pdc file so you can open the pdc file it will be directly you know uh, classify the data into that format and project project definitions file in prj format that is also we can easily generate it uh, means we can create it from the you know terra scan uh, by using the terra solid portex so what are the inputs for the uh, record for the aerial triangulations so we need raw images uh, which is having in the tiff format or ecw or jpg format and then project boundary and the tile index so what does it mean the gsd gsd means it's like you know ground sample distance value uh, which it is going to give our ground truth uh, values let's say i am i am going to get the gsd values of 1 cm 10 cm uh, the pixels will be uh, generated or the pixel uh, resolutions will be in the Point centimeter, like uh, what what we are going to define that value is like a ten centimeter or point five uh, centimeter, and we need uh, the trajectory files uh, for that for uh, you know for synchronize the raw images and then uh, that uh, the trajectory and projection information ultimately we get it and image list IML file or record uh, highly record this image list because the each image each images having the information like. Uh, Uh, the image id and the xyz and indira parameters exterior parameters that will be stored in the iml so this iml camera calibration file and the ground uh, ground control points we can uh, we will get it from the clients or we will get it from the customers so this is like a, these are the inputs data or record uh, for the aerial triangulation for the data class so now uh, i am going to uh, showcase of that like a sample data what are the sample data so you can see the sample data of the transmission line uh, projects 
so see the blue colors or towers are substation the yellow colors it is indicating the building right so the boy the color the blue light blue color uh, it is having the power line right and the green color it is the vegetation area so these are the you know the data classification spots will be involved and uh, we can classify each and every features uh, by using the terra solid products and then we can do that uh, 3d power line vectorization and we can do that data uh, like a danger point danger point uh, analysis so if you are interested if you are interested to learn the things like uh, you, you can go for google it and you can join the training session and i will explain you how to do that uh, classification how to do that mapping vectorization how to do the danger point analysis and how to create the danger point analysis report so those are all the informations that are available uh, in the terra solid products now you can see that so i just forgot to ask you that uh, while you are seeing this data you you might uh, you you will come to know like uh, what kind of uh, uh, service they may use and what what kind of uh, sensor they may use and what kind of uh, uh, means instruments they may use obviously they are uh, they have done this survey by using the aircraft uh, by using the aircraft glider so they covered the area that in the linear format now you can see that uh, the sample data of uh, railway and the infrastructure in the road projects all right so while seeing this data you can uh, you can imagine or you can say from yourself like uh, okay this data can be uh, might be captured from the mobile data yes of course this data can uh, have been captured by using the uh, mobile data instruments so you can you can see the elevations uh, based on the elevations informations uh, the data it looks like and this is the intensity uh, intensity is having only the two informations one is the black and white zero or one so this data have been captured uh, from the uh, uh, terrestrial lidar scanners so as i said that uh, from the terrestrial lidar uh, lidar uh, scanners we can create the 3d modeling we can create the 3d vector mapping uh, with the lod level of 0 1 2 3 4 5 whatever you want we can what is the, what does it mean the lod lod means it's a level of details what kind of level of details we are required so that it is indicating that that it is mean the lod so you can see the point cloud data with elevation so why i just kept this snapshot so you can uh, see uh, it is the very dense vegetation places but you can see that you know the ground profile how it is the nature of the ground how it is looks like that is the big advantages of using that you know the airborne lidar technology so you cannot get it uh, kind of this kind of profiles which uh, by using any other uh, technologies so let's say Uh, photogrammetry or more something. Yes, you know that remote sensing is given not to be information, but we can use the photogrammetry technologies. But uh, from the stereo images, we can generate the D, uh, digital elevation model. But that D DM it will not give the uh, you know the ground profile looks like this. So that's what people are preferring to go for that you know lidar technologies and using that airborne lidar mobile lidar one. So this is the sample data which is derived from that uh, you know that drones uh, using the RGB sensor. so it is very small areas so they just want to see, see the how that uh, that you know uh, the oil and gas plantations over there so they have done the survey of like a 0.25 square kilometer or whatever so they are generated the ds dsm and the dm so you can see the difference between these two the dm it's having only that you know the ground information uh, right and then you can see that dsm it is having all the informations which you are seeing the same that the arthritic image so by visualizing that image itself you can uh, compare it to yourself and you can uh, you know uh, you can clear yourself what is the difference between dm and ds so there are another one uh, um, uh, like a model a surface model for that that is called the digital terrain model so how what is the difference between digital terrain model and digital elevation model so digital elevation digital terrain model is very similar but i can use that break lines and to generate it by using the break lines to generate that like a surface model that is called digital terrain model so i can show you that uh, step by step slopes uh, in the digital terrain model so what are the advantages uh, are you are there by using the lidar survey so data can be captured quickly and accurately lidar is an airborne sensing technology that you know accelerate the speed of data collections while also providing extremely high accuracy due to it is positioning advantage so let's say i just wants to cover the 1000 square kilometer uh, do you think we can be completed within a 10 to 15 days yes it is possible to you know uh, complete the data 
or data acquisition for for the 10,000 square kilometer within the 10 to 15 days. If if that uh, you know uh, weather are supporting, like if there is no any uh, the rainy seasons or winter seasons or like uh, you know the snowfall season, we can easily cover that uh, 1,000 square kilometer in a like a 10 to 15 days. And surface data has a higher sample density better than the photogrammetry. So as I say that. Uh, in the in the single lesser pulses will give you that you know five to six, uh, five uh, three to five uh, returns, right? So in single pulses or in single pulses uh, uh, pertaining that you know the ground uh, which is having the uh, point square meter like a one point zero one square square meter it will be like a forty points uh, density and uh, capable of gathering elevation data in a dense forest. You have seen that the previous images. Uh, the natural, the, the ground profile, and with the dense forest area, so that is the bigger advantages by using the airborne radar technology. And it can be used day and night because these uh, technologies are using the active sensor, so it is not record the sunlight, as you know that. It is not affected by light variations such as the darkness and light. Yes, obviously we cannot go for that. You know the radar survey in the night time, uh, whereas uh, uh, the light uh, power, like uh, the natural powers, are not there. So unlike other types of data collection, LiDAR sensors are unaffected by uh, geometrical distortions such as angular landscapes. It can be integrated with other data sources. Yes, obviously we can use this data with a different, uh, or different uh, we can convert to the different data sources and it can be uh, compatible with the, uh, different software that we can use it. It has a minimum human dependence, yes. So when, when we are going for the conventional survey methods, obviously for, you know, covering Covering, sorry, for covering the one square kilometer, we required like a five to 10 people to go to the field and to capture it. So it's a minimum required like a, a pilot and co-pilot to the data acquisition part and the data processing. It depends like uh, what are the uh, uh, outputs or what are the products we are going to be generated. It's based on that like uh, the human uh, in the resource will be available. And what are the disadvantages? Obviously, if you are going for, you know, technologies will be like, you know, positive size as well as the negative side. So what are the disadvantages of using the LIDAR survey? High operating cost in some applications. Yeah, if, if, I, if I ask them to the vendors, I want to, uh, you know, uh, I need the data in uh, millimeter, like the MM accuracy or uh, uh, one centimeter accuracy. Obviously for that, they will make a very perfect uh, site planning and uh, they will establish that uh, base stations uh, uh, in like uh, 24 hours or 48 hours for that. Obviously, that operating cost will be very uh, based on that application, but based on that uh, client requirement. It is ineffective during heavy rain and low uh, hanging clouds. Yes, obviously, these are the electronic uh, equipment. So, when, when it is the rainy season, so definitely we cannot use that uh, uh, the instruments uh, in, uh, instruments for the survey. So this model is unreliable for water depth and uh, turbulent uh, breaking waves. Yes. The laser, laser pulses will not be, you know, heated to that uh, the water, and it will not penetrate, and it will not give that, you know, what is the uh, exact ground on the water uh, in depth uh, water area. So for that, the people are using in the different uh, technology survey technology that is called a bathymetric lidar survey, uh, which is working in that uh, beam method, like beam uh, uh, process methodology. So data sets that are extremely huge and difficult to interpret. Yes, obviously. So the data size will be in like a TB. So when I was working in that LIDAR data in 2008-2010, that data handling like, a, you know, uploading the data from the server and we are once done the work and we are uploading that data in the FTP, it was a very huge, uh, you know, challenging part was happened at the time. Now the people are working in the very smart, like they are compressed the data size into GP to the MB, like uh, let's say one GB data, now it comes into like a 100 MB. We can we can open that LAZ file format uh, in any other software like in the MicroStation or in Rhinoceros in Civil 3D software. No international protocols. Yes, uh, there are no strict uh, international protocols that guide that uh, collection and analysis of the data when using LiDAR technology. Hence, it is done haphazardly. And I have done my that. Uh, it's almost covered. I hope uh, you might understand and you have get a very clear idea about. Uh, the LiDAR technologies and what are the types of LiDAR and how the data it looks like and how the data can be used for the, uh, the different applications.